Hello, drummers of the world. Uh, let's talk about some theory and practices for djembe and dunun drummers. Offbeat rhythms, emphasizing beats, grits, simple and compound division of binary and ternary time signatures, triplets, cross rhythms, polyrhythms, polymetric rhythm syncopes that's what i want to do with you first let's look to a, uh, at a very ordinary four to four or a quarter pro or binary of four beats in a bar rhythm on this page i show the most common subdivision this is the so-called simple quadruple way of subdividing one bar of course in a quadruple uh, timing uh, one bar has four main beats the first level of subdivision this these are the one two three four one two three four one two three four the four beats the main beats and this is the first subdivision level which simply splits those four beats in half so you get eight pulses or tones the next level of subdivision is again split in two resulting in 16 pulses this is the very normal way of uh, subdividing uh, rhythms uh, in West African percussion, but also in Western music. Uh, Solilan, Morebiasa, Jolé, Rumba, uh, those rhythms are all handling in this type of time signature. Next, the same quadruple four beats in a bar rhythm. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But now we will divide it according to the compound method. Again, one bar is four main beats, but the first level of subdivision is split into three. So three times four main beats is 12 sub beats, 12 pulses, 12 tones, shorter tones. But all second and further levels of subdivision are split into two again. So two times 12 pulses will result in 24 pulses. If we subdivide further, then it will result in 48. Next, triple timing. How can we subdivide the three beats in a bar from triple timing? First, the simple triple division method. Uh, here, the first, second, and all deeper levels of subdivision are all split into two. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three is split up in only six sub pulses and a deeper level again split up by two resulting in 12 sub pulses 24 48 
on this page, we see the compound subdivision method for the triple timing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But here, the first layer of subdivision is split up in three pulses per main beat, resulting in nine pulses for the entire bar. All deeper levels are again split up by two, resulting in two times nine, 18 pulses, 36, 72, and, and so on. Examples of uh, ternary rhythms that uh, are split up in this way are soli rapid, soko, dunumbas, jabara, idamba, kakilambe, and many, many more. My guess is that this is the only uh, subdivision method that is uh, used in West African percussion. We also know the duple rhythm, time, the duple uh, time signature. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's the time signature uh, used for marches, military or hiking marches. Also, this rhythm can be subdivided according to the simple or the compound methods. So, we have the simple subdivision methods, uh, subdivision uh, of the main beats of rhythm, and then each sublevel is split up, split up in two. Or we have the compound subdivision method, where all sublevels are split up in two, except the first one. The first level is then split up in three. Duple, triple, and quadruple rhythms are called regular. All other rhythms, time signatures, I should say, are called irregular. An example is Dave Brubeck's Take 5, with five beats in a bar. Check it. In India and some other cultures, there are many more uh, irregular uh, time signatures. Irregular time signature signatures only split up in two at all levels. Let me show to you the sound of a dripping tap. you can hear, there is no emphasis on any of the pulses. So I can play any rhythm on top of it. When I start putting emphasis on one of the pulses, I get a rhythm. Let me play a quadruple rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or a triple rhythm. This one has an emphasis on the one and the three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. These kinds of putting emphasis on certain pulses uh, makes rhythm, can create a rhythm. A type of music with a strong emphasis on the one is the Vienna waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. You see those dancing couples swirling on the dance floor. 
about uh, five percent only of modern Western pop music is performed in triple beat. One, two, three, one, two, three. But not necessarily with, uh, with such a strong emphasis on the one. About 95% of Western pop music is played in quadruple beat, with very often emphasis on the one and the three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So a duple rhythm within a quadruple rhythm. West African percussion music may have a skeleton that is more challenging, but generally the one can be discovered still easily, which allows to start counting when you hear the music whether by a rapid one two three one two three one two three one two three or by a rapid one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four those pulses fit eh? the one two three one two three one two three fit in a one two three one two three triple timing and those one two threes that's the main beat and the same count for the one two three four one two three four that fits in a slower one, two, three, four, one, two, three, quadruple beat. So that's the grid onto which all instruments are played on. In West African percussion, I estimate that about 50% of the songs is in triple timing and the others in quadruple timing. In West African percussion, it is easier to recognize a triple timing by trying to put a very rapid one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, instead of a slow Vienna waltz style one, two, three, one, two, three, because in West African percussion, there is not generally this strong emphasis on the one. One more thing about em emphasis. Most often the main beat, or pulse, in pop music is on the one and the three of a quadruple rhythm. But there are well-known exceptions like reggae. Reggae has the one, two, three, four quadruple timing rhythm, but with the emphasis on the two and the four, the so-called after beat. This gives this music a kind of laziness and it will invite people to dance differently, although the one, two, three, four can still be very well recognized. I never discovered other timing signatures in West Africa than ternary, triple timing, and binary, quadruple. So we will focus on these timings. You will need to train yourself in discovering quickly in what time signature a music piece is performed. Any music, classical, jazz, pop, percussion. And you can do that by rapidly counting one, two, threes or one, two, three, fours. Or slow counting one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Your hands can never perform correctly a beat or another instrument eh, if your brain does not, does not understand what your hands need to do. It is absolutely essential that you know the time signature before starting to drum or dance. Note that in classical music, it is quite common to have switches, swaps, if you like, between binary and ternary pieces in one music piece. Let's talk about mixing time signatures. Timing, timings can be mixed with each other in a number of ways. 
if you mix a duple timing with a quadruple timing, the beats will coincide as they are both binary. You will not notice this mix as strange in any way. But if you mix a duple or quadruple timing with a triple timing, this will give a surprising result and add a fascinating tension to the listening again to the listening experience. The four over three or three over four, if you like, polyrhythm is the most frequently used one. Theoretically, there are numerous combinations possible. In classical music and jazz, you may find these quite rare combinations and they are really difficult to play. But we will focus on the ones used in West African percussion, which are also the ones used in Western pop music, except of course for those rare uh, uh, occasions uh, that, it, that it does not count. Let us take a look at uh, one of the methods of mixing uh, time signatures. First, triplets. Triplets in a quadruple or binary time signature. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When we play so-called triplets, we do not divide a quadruple bar in four notes. We do not split the four main beats in eight sub beats in eight pulses, but in uh, every main beat will be subdivided in three notes. So according to the compound subdivision method. When we play triplets, we stick to the dominant rhythm of the quadruple timing. That's the main grid, the dominant grid. Said otherwise, the ones of the triplets, these, follow the main beats of the quadruple timing. And you can increase the tension. Uh, the, 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 the already playing this will result in some kind of a tension, but it can be increased by not playing certain notes of this triplet sequence uh, or by putting the emphasis on a surprising note, so not on the ones, but on the threes, for instance that we call syncopes. Let's talk about quadruplets and triplets. I have ready on the metronome a four beat rhythm, a quadruple rhythm. Our first will split it up in two and in two, so four sub beats per main beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, rhythm according to the compound method. Um, then uh, each main beat will be split up by three resulting in a triplet played in a four beat four main beat rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, one two three 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 
Now about polyrhythms. When a polyrhythm is created, none of the two time signatures used, triple and quadruple, is really dominating the other. Or said otherwise, none of the two rhythms will function as the grid for the other. How can you obtain then a grid in which both timings will fit? That is fairly simple. You multiply the main beats of both time signatures with each other. For a 4 to 3 or 3 to 4 polyrhythm, that is 4 beats in a bar times 3 beats in a bar results in a grid of 12 pulses. Well, let's dive deeper in the 4 to 3 polyrhythm grid. To make it even more simple, although it's not that simple, we will take time as the dominant factor to attach the grid on. We'll take some a grid that will cover two seconds. In blue, here, we will see the four main beats of a quadruple rhythm. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All half a second apart from each other. And in pink, we will see the three beats in a bar. One, two, three, one, two, three of the triple timing each 0.67 seconds apart. In this row, in yellow, you see those 12 pulses, the grid of 12 pulses, in which you can fit all beats that you need to make to create a combination of a three beats in a bar rhythm with a four beats in a bar rhythm. Um, we will come back on this fascinating way of combining these two rhythms uh, later on. Let us first take a look at another way of mixing instruments. Very interesting for West African percussion because this is the main way they mix all the rhythms for one song. In a cross rhythm, all instruments stick to one time signature. The base of West African percussion music and most other Western music is that the instruments or parts, if you like, are played cross rhythmic. Instruments may skip beats uh, of beats or put emphasis on other notes than the main beat, the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can put the emphasis on another of these four counts. And this can already create a fascinating groove if you do that on a number of instruments. Here I have a scheme where I have subdivided one bar of a rhythm with four main beats in uh, 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 beats, that's dark blue, beats on the highest bass drum, the kankini, uh, the medium bass drum, the sangbam, and the lowest bass drum, the large drum, the du numba. Um, the kankini plays a pulse on the one, on the ones uh, from the first and the third bar. That's very common, very ordinary. Then the Sangban, he does something else. Uh, he jumps over the one and he makes a beat on the two and the three. So here, the two drums coincide. And the Durumba, he plays, he doesn't start drumming on the first beat of the one, but on the second. 
and so on and so on. So here we have 16 pulses that are in use to subdivide everything. Okay, now I have the same cross rhythm, but with syncopes played by the dunumba. So all this is the same, except that the dunumba, he plays something, he adds some extra tension, some extra pepper in the rhythm by making a beat on the last of the 16 sub pulses of these four main beats. In the rhythm shown, there is still no polyrhythm involved and there are no triplets. There are only beats fitting in the simple quadruple or binary grid. But there are off beats and beats that lay the emphasis on another 1 16th pulse. This will result in a light form of syncopation. You can set up similar schemes for compound subdivisions with triplets involved. Um, there is a website made by a Dutchman, Mr. Paul Noss, with many, many, many West African percussion songs where all these beats are written down and also the mutes and djembe solos and phrases and uh, calls. Uh, if, um, so you can visit uh, this section of his website and you will find hundreds of rhythms written down uh, so that you can play them. Are cross rhythmic songs unique for West Africa? Absolutely not. Also in pop songs, jazz and classical music, this way of building tension and creating surprising grooves and melodic elements is widely used. Then there is a way of mixing uh, two rhythms, two time signatures, I should say, um, in a way that uh, that up till recent I never had heard of, and that's called polymetric. What is that? When a triple rhythm, triple timing rhythm, one two three, 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 and so on and so on, is played along with a quadruple or duple rhythm, but with the same beats per minute, so let's say 90 beats per minute, eh, the result is called a polymetric rhythm. I have no real life examples. Uh, I will try to create uh, one so that you will understand what the result will be. Um, so all beats coincide, but the emphasis that you will put on the ones, or maybe also the trees, if for a quadruple rhythm, do not coincide with the emphasized ones of the triple rhythm. So it will, it will give a, 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 a surprising uh, result. We'll, we'll try to show that, uh, see that later. A polymetric played rhythms. Well, it was disappointing to to be short. Uh, what I did is I did uh, record with the same uh, beats per minute, 160, uh, three beats in a bar rhythm and a four beats in a bar rhythm. And the result was this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Here another one, two, three. 
one, two, three, one, two, three, very simple, very straight. Well, combined. Just a big mess. Okay, this polyrhythm technique. How can you learn to play a 4 to 3 polyrhythm or a, or a 3 to 4? Which sounds the same. It is the easiest to give both timing tones another tuning. So you use two different instruments or two keys on a keyboard uh, so that you can, so that you get a melody. We will take uh, two, I will take two different djembe's to make things clear. Or maybe I will use two dunumbas or both. There are two phrases, mnemonics, that will help you to develop this useful skill. For a 4 to 3 rhythm, it is a 12 pul pulse grid, as I showed before, but with the triple timing as guiding, you might say slightly dominant. That's your skeleton, uh, your grid. Sing and later play, Smell the stinking butter, smell the stinking butter, smell the stinking butter. Note that these three syllables, smell the stinking butter, smell the stinking butter, three syllables are emphasized. Those are the three triple main beats of the, 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 triple timing beat that we use to guide ourselves. With hand setting, smell left, right, the left, sting, right, king, left, right, left. So the left hand plays the four beats and the right hand plays the three beats of the triple timing rhythm. So I will uh, show it to you. Train this polyrhythm until you have mastered it. Polyrhythms. First, smell the stinking butter. Smell the stinking butter. Smell the stinking butter. I play those two simultaneously. That's the start of the 12 pulse grid. Then that 4 to 3 because for me now it will be easier to count the three beats I am doing here then counting the 1 2 3 4 I'm doing here because I have this smell the stinking butter sound in my in my head. <laughs> you 
you see. Now, some attention for the 3 to 4 polyrhythm. What will surprise you is that the hand setting is the same, the resulting sound will be the same, but it is after having trained the 4 to 3 polyrhythm, this will be quite uncomfortable to play. But imagine that you are in a band and there is a quadruple rhythm that is played and you want to put a triple timing on top of it. Then smell the stinking butter won't work. You need something else. So if 4 to 3 is okay, you will likely be disappointed to discover that playing the inverse, so 3 to 4, is not so easy as you would expect. However, it is exactly the same 12 pulse grid and with the same tones on the same grid. So what's the reason? Well, you know you have the emphasis of the rhythm and maybe the smell of the stinking butter in your brain now. You have trained that. To forget about the smell, eh, we change the mnemonic phrase to give it emphasis on other syllables. The syllables of the three of the triple timing. So now learn the rhythm based on another phrase. So now learn the rhythm of the next phrase. Pass butter to the left. 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 Now let's start a training on the three to four polyrhythm. Will sound the same, but it's another mind setting. The mnemonic was pass butter to the left. 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 It is much more difficult for me to, to count with what I'm doing here because I have now this mnemonic for the 3 to 4 rhythm in my head. Once you have uh, this, uh, this combination uh, trained, uh, this You can also change the hand setting and uh, that, uh, that will enable a little bit more uh, variations. That was the original hand setting. But now I'm doing it in a more comfortable way by shifting right with left. on it. The 3 to 4 polyrhythm. Pass butter to the left. Pass butter to the left. Pass butter to the left. Pass butter to the left.
Okay, now that you have uh, the tools to uh, train uh, uh, polyrhythmic uh, rhythms, uh, uh, let's let's finish this with uh, some other uh, terminology. Rolls. Rolls are rapidly played beats. Both hands are needed. If a drum is played with all ten fingers or two bouncing sticks, then extremely short and many notes can be played within the main beat. That's why you can subdivide a rhythm uh, until 128th or so. Huh? Rolls that roll out of this base subdivision method of sub, uh, 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 the, 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 the base rhythm are quickly noticed by the audience and should be avoided. So train, train, train. Rolls in triple timing differ from rolls in quadruple timing, as triple timing rolls require shifting the emphasis from left to right hand and right to left hand. I will leave it with that remark. It's just for your information. Flams. A flam is played with two hands or sticks. The trick is not to hit the drum perfectly at the same time with both hands, but with some spacing, some time spacing in between, which should be regular and accurate within the used timing, within the dominant timing. The pulse spacing may be as small as 1 64th, as an example, for a quadruple or a 1 72th for a triple timing bar, but of course may be larger too, provided that the next double beat, uh, the next flam, has the same time spacing. Well, to finish with, uh, let's talk about syncopes. Syncopation is the ultimate way to surprise the audience, the dancers and fellow drummers. It is the cherry on the pie. It is the fascinating mix of offbeat played notes, shifting of emphasis, rolls, triplets, flams, and yes, sometimes beats played in another timing schedule. So polyrhythmic. Syncopation is mainly the right and the task of the soloists. It is essential that the soloist flawlessly falls back in the main rhythm. Only then the audience knows this person is a virtuoso. He knows or she about rhythms and is master of the instrument. The other drummers keep going steadily so that the soloist can pause, make run-ups, walk around on stage, make breaks or sidesteps to deploy his or her creativity. <laughs>